Hello friends, welcome to Insights I Can Initiative. In the recent success of Chandrayaan 3, in this video we are going to discuss about ISRO's success so far in terms of satellites, in terms of the launching satellites, in terms of the launching vehicle and in terms of the extra planetary missions, okay, such as you know like Chandrayaan as well as Mangalyaan Mars orbital mission in this kind of interplanetary missions we are going to discuss. So it is going to be the how more or less the ISRO success in various dimensions. Now let us see the syllabus mapping. This is related to Gender Studies Paper 3, Science and Technology and India's achievement in Space Technology especially. Okay. Now let us see the video components. In this video we are going to discuss about ISRO's achievements so far in terms of various areas. Then ISRO's satellite program and ISRO's launching vehicle program and ISRO's planetary explore, exploratory missions. These are the three areas we are going to discuss. First, we will start our lesson with the satellites. Then we will go to the launching vehicle. You know the students. For the lightweight satellites, we use the PSLV and for the heavy weights, we use the GSLV. And now we are using the upgraded version that is the GSLV Mark III in that one of the version is about you know like modified sat, sat, satellite launching vehicle. Okay. So now let us see about this various developments of the ISRO. First, let us see in the success of Chandrayaan 3, now we are focusing on the ISRO's achievements so far in these three areas. First, let us concentrate on the satellite. You know the students, Earth is having one natural satellite and of course, so many hundreds and thousands of the artificial satellite. Satellite is a body in the space which revolves around the planet that is known as satellite. Now, let us see, we tried to send artificial satellite initially from the other countries. Later, we developed mechanism in such manner that we started sa sending satellite from our India itself. First, let us see how our satellite journey started. Our India's first satellite, it launched in 1975, Aryabhata satellite launching vehicle, la satellite launch, sorry, 1975. You know the students in the same 1975, even at that time, emergency imposed in India in the same year emergency imposed in India. So, you can easily understand students. Tell me students, what is the name of the satellite that launched first time from India? Tell me. Okay. So, keep your answer in comments. Anyhow, I will explain here, but try to keep the answer in the comment section. So, to conduct the experiments, this Aryabhata, it was meant to conduct experiment in X-ray astronomy and aeronautics and solar physics. And it was launched from where? Kapustin Yar launch base which was present which was present in Soviet Union and by using the Cosmos 3M rocket. I told you already when I was explaining the Luna 25 at that time I told you Russians they use Cosmogram I mean Cosmodrome as well as the Cosmonaut they use Cosmos their space agency also known as Roscosmos Russia's space agency name Roscosmos. So at that time we don't have any launching vehicle and even we don't have any setup to launch the satellites also. It was in 1975. Then let's see. Then in 1979 and in 1981, we launched two remote sensing satellites on experimental basis. These are the Bhaskara 1 and Bhaskara 2. Okay. They laid the foundation for India's remote sensing satellites, IRS. These remote sensing satellites, they used as earth observation satellites and they built by ISRO. Then 1988. Indian remote sensing satellite 1A actually 1A it was the it was launched in the you know like polar satellite orbit and it was having the two cameras also LISS 1 and LISS 2 LISS okay it stands for you know like earth observation and they started sending photographs related to the and these photographs related to the earth they started using in the agriculture forestry geology and disaster management. This was the first time Indian space, you know, like agency, they started providing images related to Earth. You know that by this time, already ISRO was started. ISRO started in 1969 as the ISRO. Previously, it was started as INCORP. We are not going into that details. Now, in SATS, after this, you know, like Indian remote sensing, we started towards the INSAT. These are the geostationary satellites and they mainly helped in terms of the telecommunication, broadcasting and metrology, giving information about the metrological information. Actually, in the beginning, these INSAT satellites, they were built by Ford Aerospace, but 
from the insat 2 series from here onwards india started building its own satellites since 1992 this is about insat after that recently even we launched the irnss you know that students normally for the navigation purpose we are depending on the gps global positioning system developed by america in the same way you know like russia's this kind of navigation system glonas whereas china bido europe galileo in the same way india want to have its navigation system that's name is irnss indian regional navigation satellite system very very important it was popularly known as navic navigation with indian constellation very very important students so these are seven satellites irnss is hosting three satellites are the geostationary and four satellites are the geosynchronous and these are at the altitude of more than 36000 kilometers so there these satellites st stationed irnss like i said earlier seven satellites and the first one launched in 2013 and their main purpose is they are going to provide services related to terrestrial aerial and marine transportation location based services like gps and the 3d mapping of the you know like cities personal mobility transportation and surveying and scientific research you know the students pm swamvida scheme was launched you know like surveying of village records i mean villages and providing the digital record all that can be possible with the help of the irnss next so up to these are some of the very significant moments of isro in relation to satellites now we are going to discuss about the satellite launching vehicle here you have to understand about two things students satellite is the one which revolves around the earth okay whereas the satellite launching vehicle is the one the vehicle which place the satellite into the orbit after placing into the orbit the satellite launching vehicles they fall into the ocean of course some are reusable so far india did not achieve success in terms of the reusable launching vehicle so far whatever the launching vehicle we are using they are only for one time use now we are going to discuss the satellite launching vehicle actually satellite launching vehicle they started the journey with slv satellite launching vehicle then aslv augment satellite launching vehicle then PSLV polar satellite launching vehicle then GSLV then GSLV mark 3 like that we developed gradually now in 1963 India used US Nike Apache sounding rockets always remember sounding rockets they cannot escape the earth atmosphere and they cannot go to the you know like so orbit around the earth they are the sub orbital rockets okay recently even the India's first rocket from the private company, it was also tested. It was also the suborbital rocket. If you remember, tell me students, which was the first private company launched satellite launching vehicle from India? What is the name of the company and what was the name of that rocket? Next, so this first sounding rocket, it launched from Thiruvananthapuram, Tumba, and the sounding rockets are the suborbital rockets and they are not capable of escaping out of the Earth's gravity. In 1980, for the first time, India launched a launching vehicle, SVL-3, satellite vehicle, I mean satellite launching vehicle. So this was about, it launched the Rohini satellite, it was around 40 kg experimental satellite. With this, India became the sixth country to launch satellites. Then, augmented satellite launching vehicle, ASLV. ASLV is the upgraded version of the SLV and it was able to carry payload more than 100 kg. So with this, India launched a significant success. Argument satellite launching vehicle. Then PSLV. PSLV. Actually, PSLV is considered as a workhorse of the ISRO because it is able to launch up to 1000 kg into the space beginning. Now, of course, we upgraded way more than this. After PSLV success, we entered into the big rocket league. Okay. And the successful launch of the PSLV, it was in 1982. Development started, but launch took place in 1994 during the time of P.V. Nasimha Rao as a Prime Minister, PSLV. PSLV launched the satellites and the satellites will revolve in polar orbits which cover the entire Earth. Okay. That is about the PSLV. And PSLV, it was available in three configurations. First one was the general PSLV. It was having the six engine, you can call it as stop and booster you can call it as these are the engines for easy language layman language core alone PSLV without any additional engines and PSLV XL it is about the extended engine 
actually with this advanced PSLV we used these advanced PSLVs in Chandrayaan 1 and Mangalyaan. The success of the Chandrayaan 1 and Mangalyaan, the success is owed to the high advanced development of the PSLV. And with the development of PSLV, ISRO started expanding its commercial activities. We are helping to other countries in launching their satellites into the space. So ISRO's commercial activities also increased a lot after the success of the PSLV. Then GSLV. GSLV stands for Geosynchronous Satellite Launching Vehicle. It can deliver the payload up to 1750 kg to the low earth orbit LEO and up to an altitude. I mean this low earth orbit is up to an altitude of 600 kilometers and it can also launch satellites even up to the geostationary, you know like geostationary orbit or geosynchronous orbit but with the less amount of the weight. But more or less GSLV is the one which required for India for the success of the, you know, like Gaganyaan, where we want to, sp uh, you know, like send humans into the, under the surface of moon for that, we require the GSLV a lot. Because GSLV is the one which uses the cryogenic engine. Cryogenic engine. That means it also uses the liquid hydrogen as well as the liquid oxygen together. Cryogenic engine. Previously, engines used to use either the solid fuel or the liquid fuel. You might have watched the movie Rocket here, where, you know, like Abdul Kalam, so, uh, he was uh, doing research on honorable one he was doing research on solid fuels whereas Nambi Narayan he was doing research on liquid fuels our former president of India who contributed to science and technology a lot he was popularly known as missile man Abdul Kalam next third generation GSLV they are popularly known as mark 3 later they were upgraded popularly known as launch vehicle mark 3 LVM 3 in that again they have different versions M1, M2, M3, M4 and now this updated GSLV they can able to put payloads up to 4000 kg payloads into the geostationary orbit which is above the 30,000 kilometers from the earth it is going to be the ISRO's heaviest satellite before we develop the GSLV Mark III we used to depend on French this you know like French Guyana where we used to depend on the European Space Agency satellite launching vehicle Ariane 5 by using the Arian 5, we used it to launch the heavy satellite into the space. But now, we have our own satellite launching vehicle GSLV Mark 3. With the help of GSLV Mark 3, we were successfully able to launch Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3. But unfortunately, Chandrayaan 2 did not uh, have this soft landing. But Chandrayaan 3, luckily, and with the effort of our ISRO scientist, it successfully landed on the surface of the moon. Now, ISRO's planetary exploration, explorations, exploring other planets, to explore the other planets, we tried so far with respect to Moon, that is satel other satellites, as well as Mars. We are able to successfully enter into the orbit of the Mars. Recently, we are experimenting with the, you know, like uh, Shukrayan to explore the, you know, like Venus. And of course, we are trying the Aditya L1 to observe the Sun from Lagrange Point 1. Now, let's see Chandrayaan 1. It was launched in 2008. In this project, we launched orbiter as well as the moon impact moon impact probe it uh, hit with the moon and even it marked the presence of isros on the moon at that time india was the fifth country to reach the lunar you know like the orbit now india became the fourth country to achieve the soft landing on the moon and the first country to achieve the soft landing on the south pole which is always on the dark side chandrayaan 1 and with the help of chandrayaan 1 we successfully recognized the presence of water, the trapped water on moon's surface. Next, we experimented with Mars Orbital Mission. It was launched in 2013 and the first interplanetary mission of the ISRO. And the India became the fourth nation to achieve into the Mars orbit apart from Russia's Roscosmos, US NASA and the European Union's ESA. India became the fourth nation to reach to the, you know, like Mars orbit. Then Chandrayaan 2. Chandrayaan 2, it was having the lander, rover and orbiter. But unfortunately, due to the hard landing, the lander and rover, they got damaged and only orbiter remained. Still, the orbiter is giving services and Chandrayaan 3 is going to use the services of the orbiter of Chandrayaan 2. Okay, this is about Chandrayaan 2. And Chandrayaan 3, we clearly explained regarding the Chandrayaan 3 just two days back. It's a lander, rover, and it is using the orbiter of the Chandrayaan 2. Lander Vikram, and the rover is Pragya. So this is about the Chandrayaan 3. And this is about the 
isro success so far in terms of satellites and launching vehicle and the planetary explorations yesterday's video question consider the following statements new development bank has been set up by the epic no wrong the headquarters of the new development bank is in shanghai right so answer is two only b okay today's video question today's videos question students let's see consider the following statements about the mangalyaan it is also known as mars orbiter mission first statement it made india the second country second country to reach into the mars orbit it made india the only country only country which entered into the mars orbit for the in the first attempt so out of these three statements which statements are right main question what is india's plan to have its own space station and how it will it benefit our space program this question is about india's own space station this is today's main question now as we reach to the end of this video let us revise quickly whatever we discussed in this video in this video we discussed about the success achieved by isro so far in various areas such as satellite launching vehicle satellites and the interplanetary explorations in this we discussed about how the satellite development took, took place how the satellite launching vehicle development took place and chandrayaan 1 chandrayaan 2 chandrayaan 3 and mars orbital mission this is the detailed analysis regarding the isro's achievement